this weekend, my family observed our favorite Christmas tradition. We sat down together and we watched a Christmas movie. And each year, we watch the same ones. We always start with Elf. <laughs> and that's what we watched on Friday. And then we always end with a Christmas story on Christmas Eve. In between those two, uh, and we got a late start this year, we'll, we'll watch Home Alone, uh, or a version of A Christmas Carol. When the kids were younger, we did a Charlie Brown Christmas this year, we might have to introduce the boys to the Griswold family <laughs> and their Christmas vacation. <laughs> then there are some movies that we watch with just Megan and I. Die Hard is one of those. <laughs> Although that one may soon become a family thing because the kids are teenagers, you know. Uh, White Christmas is just us, not because it's rated R, because the kids thought it was boring. <laughs> And then we watch Love Actually. Now, if you haven't seen Love Actually, it's one of those British ensemble flicks uh, that follows lots of different parallel and intersecting relationships with plenty of humor and music thrown in. Uh, and then it ties everything up neatly by the end for Christmas. The, uh, the first scene in it is this big, wedding scene, and the best man, played by Rick Grimes of The Walking Dead, uh, is, uh, he plays a, plank, a prank on his best friend, the groom, and he arranges for the whole congregation to sing today's Beatles song to the happy couple. All you need is love. The, the, the organ starts it out, and then a, a guest singer pops up in the balcony, then a brass section pops up in the fourth row. Everyone singing, all you need is love. That love is all you need. It's what the whole movie is about. About how important it is to find love. And it's a fun movie full of great actors telling the tried and true Hollywood love story that makes us feel certain feelings over the course of 90 minutes and want to watch it again next year. I love that movie. I am a sap, <laughs> so I like love stories like that. But I also recognize that if, if that movie were a food, it would be dessert. It's full of the emotional equivalents of sugar and butter and a little bit of salt. It, it sings, all you need is love, but it defines love really narrowly. The, the, the movies and stories that entertain us, they tell us that love is ultimately a feeling. A great feeling. But mostly a feeling that comes and goes, leading people on an emotional roller coaster that makes for a good movie but often falls far short when it comes to real life. And we've experienced that movie love feeling, the, the, the infatuation, the, the racing heartbeat, the sweaty palms kind of love, it is fantastic. And it's powerful. <clears throat> but then our lives take twists and turns. The baby doesn't sleep. A job is lost. And the medical tests come back. The Beatles were right that all you need is love. But not the feeling of love. At least the way it's shown in the movies. We're going to need a lot more than that kind of feeling to get through it all. 
But as we'll see in our passage today, love is much, much more than that. Today in our Christmas scripture, we meet Joseph, who provides the perfect counterbalance to this Hollywood idea of love and shows us what it means to live love out. Our scripture passage starts uh, in verse 18 of, of the first chapter of Matthew. And it goes like this. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Now, now, there's so much going on in this sentence, we need to stop and take note. Too often, we, we modernize everything uh, when we read it, you know, and we make it more like a movie. But we need to be careful not to impose our current understanding of marriage onto this text. This was not a culture where women were free to pursue their own interests or sleep with whoever they wanted. This was the Middle East around 2,000 years ago. A scandal like this ruined the lives of people that it touched, which makes it uh, all the more remarkable how it turned out. Going on, verse 19. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Jesus. Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. So, Let's look at what Matthew says about Joseph. It says that Joseph was a righteous man in that he did what was right all the time. That's what righteous means. He did it whether he felt like it or not. And when his personal life fell apart, that didn't change about him. Matthew uses three words to describe Joseph's actions. He says that Joseph planned, he resolved, and he did. But one verb isn't there. There's one verb that we don't see. We don't see Joseph felt. Matthew doesn't mention how Joseph felt about the unfolding events in his life. We don't know if he was hurt when he thought Mary betrayed him. We don't know if he was head over heels in love. We don't know if he was scared of what his friends would say or angry that things hadn't worked out the way he hoped they might. Now, if Joseph were alive today, now, if he was my age right now, 
I, I wonder if he would have felt like his task was impossible. And staying with his fiancée when she was pregnant with the Son of God, <laughs> leaving their home, dealing with the isolation and judgment of friends and neighbors. Uh, maybe if he was my age right now, he, he would have just thought, I just can't. I just can't even. But we do know, without any mention of feelings, that Joseph embodies what it means to love. Not because of how he felt, but because of what he does. He stays. See, love, love is much more than a feeling. It's an action. We see that in Joseph, and we see it much more so in the child that he helped raise to become a man. The whole story of Christmas is that God wasn't content with just feeling feelings of love for us from a distance. You see, he came himself as that baby born to Mary and Joseph. In Jesus, God did the hardest thing that has ever been done. The Creator became a part of His creation. From love, God becomes man and was born in a manger. <coughs> For love, God is born as one of us. For love, He would grow up to teach and to heal. For love, He would suffer and die. And then overcome death once and for all. That's love. Real love. And it is a whole lot more than a feeling. It, it stands in contrast to the softness of love as it is too often portrayed today. Because that's what Jesus did. And that's what his mother's husband did too. You know, it's true that all you need is love. And if you need to know what love really means, look to Jesus. Look to Joseph. Or, listen to the Beatles. <laughs> In their words, about love, there's nothing you can do that can't be done. Nothing you can sing that can't be sung. No one you can save that can't be saved. Nothing you can do, but you can learn how to be you in time. It's easy. All you need is love. Love is all you need. There's nothing you can know that isn't known. Nothing you can see that isn't shown. There's nowhere you can be that isn't where you were meant to be. It's easy. All you need is love. You know, I think Joseph and Mary did eventually fall in love in that Hollywood way. And I think Joseph did love Jesus. This is evidenced in the fact that he, next chapter, he protects him by fleeing to Egypt. It's evidenced by the fact that Jesus 
went into carpentry just like Joseph. And Joseph and Mary had many more children. But it all started not with the feeling of love. But it all started with Joseph doing the thing he thought he probably couldn't do. And finding out that there really is nothing you can do that can't be done. For Joseph, it all started with one simple decision. The decision to stay. It was an action born of his love for God. And I believe that it turned into an ongoing action and feeling for his life and his family. That the, the feeling followed the action. Because all you need is love. You know, with your spouse, when, when life throws you a curveball and things seem to come undone, with your children as you raise them up through sleepless nights and stand beside them as they make their own choices as adults, with your friends as you move through life together and watch the world change right in front of you, all you need is love. Not the feeling of love. The, the kind of love that directs your steps in actions. It helps you do what you thought might be impossible and you find out, like Joseph did, that there's nothing you can do that can't be done. It's the love that's made known in our actions. The love we've experienced first from God in the birth of Jesus Christ. The kind of love that doesn't give neatly wrapped answers, but it's its own answer to life's vexing problems. That the kind of love that tells us that in life and in death we belong. The love that we are freely given from God, that we, we can't lose just because we had a bad day. And, and it's more powerful than any of us. The love that was given to us while we were still sinners. That nothing can separate us. Not even death. The love that claims us as children of God. The love that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. The love that enables us to love others. Because God first loved us. Because God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. So that everyone who believes in Him will never perish but have eternal life. All you need is love. Born in a manger. Born for you.